you're doing any tra traveling or if you're living in a travel trail like this and want to be able to cook outside when it's 90 or 100 degrees or if you're doing camping and stuff it's almost essential to have a stove of some sort now we've got a couple other little gizmos in the van including like a jet boil um it's pretty cool uh we've been using for the last couple of years i used to use the single burner butanes coleman butanes love them butane can be hard to find i'd always when i was uh, in, in the van a lot, I would always carry like a dozen canisters or more to make sure I always had them. Sometimes you can't find them. I've not been able to find, I've been thinking about buying another one, and I have not been able to find butane for months here in Wyoming. So that's not happened. And we had this awful two burner uh, propane stove from Walmart. Uh, I hated it from the day I bought it for the first time I tried to use it. So it needed to go away. But we were at the other, not too long ago, a couple weeks ago, I guess, a month ago maybe, <laughs> we were at an estate sale in rural, middle of nowhere, Wyoming, and one of the things they had for sale there was this really cool uh, vintage, uh, I guess, um, single burner propane stove. It's definitely been around for a while. I've never seen one like it. Um, the burner, look, the knob looks like it's Bakelite. Um, so it's, it's been around a while, but it's all steel, and it does have a, iron burner and of course you know that thing so we're pretty excited uh, to try it out i think it's going to work well i hope it works well most of this old stuff works forever this is the inlet for the gas here um, it had this adapter on it the catch is this does not fit my i think it's the right threads but it won't fit my adapter for regulator adapter for the propane bottle and I have another, I have a whole bunch of adapters. This one will fit on here too. And this one, the pipe will go in, but it's too fat to accept this. So little crisis there. We're gonna head out to our parts store, local, one of our parts stores, either Menards or Home Depot or Tractor Supply or someplace that carries propane stuff. And I need to find a propane fitting that this is the inside, the, the female end matches this, but then the male end has to fit our regulator so that I can make that work. Um, then we can get that to use. So we're hoping to uh, figure that out today. So we're gonna go take a look around and see if we can find something that'll work for this. All right, so I guess we'll try tractor supply first. They do carry this kind of stuff uh, and uh, it's, it'll be an easier in and out than either Home Depot or Menards this week, which are pretty crazy because we have uh, some religious group out of Seventh-day Adventists, I believe, is is having their, I guess they do it about every five years, they do some massive, massive get-together and they have people from around the world show up in one place. In this case, for they've decided to uh, descend on Gillette to our uh, um, facilities here. Uh, they have a, a county city um, multi-event center the complex they call it and there's 60,000 people extra in Gillette now Gillette's only a city of about 30,000 normally this happens to coincide with Sturgis bike week and even though we don't get the bulk of the Sturgis people a lot of bikes are passing through and people on trucks hauling bikes all this stuff they're already stopping here for fuel and supplies and everything on the way to Sturgis so it's already crowded and busy here in August, early August, and now we have an extra 60,000 people. So roughly speaking, we probably have, well, we solidly have somewhere between 90 and 100,000 people in this city. It's normally 30,000, so all the stores are packed. Everything's packed. There's all kinds of places that are closed to the general public. You can't go. So we're trying to avoid places like Walmart and Home Depot and Menards this week because they're packed. So Tractor Supply apparently is not getting that same kind of attention. It looks a little quieter. So we'll try here first for our propane parts. And if that doesn't work, then we'll have to, you know, compromise and, and suck it up and go to Menards or something like that. But we'll go see what they got here. Hopefully they got what we need.
not the exact adapter I said I was looking for, but I think it might work. And they're a little bit limited supply here at Tractor Supply. Um, this time of year, apparently they often have a lot more there, but I guess uh, it's not the, their peak season for propane stuff. So hopefully this will work. Nope, still not gonna do it. That's annoying. <clears throat> I was hoping one end or the other of it would fit. Maybe I'll go with plan B and try drilling out the old one. So unfortunately that did not work. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna attempt to drill out the old one and make it just a little bigger. This may also not work. I mean, I can drill it out, it's just brass, but I don't know if it's gonna seal up right. So we'll test that carefully, both with a uh, combustible gas detector that we have, as well as with the old fashioned uh, soapy water bubble spray thing. And we'll make sure that it seals up tight if I can get it to fit. Uh, so we're kind of, like I said, we're kind of improvising here with, uh, from some real old tech, trying to get it to modern. I probably could go to Menards or Home Depot and find something that would work, but I'm trying not to go there. So we'll try this. If this doesn't work, we'll have to go to Menards or Home Depot. So <laughs> this is like plan B or C or D already, so. See if this works. Oh, well, that fits now, but this darn thing still won't go over the outside. I thought it was going to fit. It just wouldn't go in the middle, so that did not work still. So, unfortunate. I guess we have to go to Home Depot or Menards and see if we can find something there. Well, we are cruising around in the Prius today just because uh, this thing gets an honest to goodness. 50 miles a gallon on average cruising around and the van if i've got it on open roads and i hold it to 65 or less which i always do i can hit like 18 if the wind isn't the wrong contrary uh, <laughs> driving around town I, I think we're about 10 miles a gallon in the van uh, as opposed to 50 so if we're doing these quick little errands uh, that does add up and saves us quite a bit of money driving around in the little puddle jumper here um, although people think prius cars are tiny. This is actually a lot more spacious than, than many compact cars I've driven uh, and much more comfortable too. Little Echo that I used to have, Toyota Echo, that thing I'd get better than 40 miles a gallon out of on the, uh, oops, hold on, watching out for pronghorn. They're all over the place. And like just last night almost hit a deer or the night before. They ran right, a little fawn that ran right in front of us. I'm still traumatized by how close that was. I was we were within about a foot. I was feeling awful. And uh, fortunately, the thing stopped and turned around at the absolute last minute. And I was mashing the brakes, trying to bring it down. But anyway, the Echo I used to have, we were at, uh, I get, you know, 40 or better out of that. But it was like a little tin can. It was not all that comfortable to ride in and uh, did not have nearly the space that the Prius does. So we're driving the Prius because we get 50 miles a gallon. My parts, hopefully uh, we got what we need now. I think I did. It took me three different adapters to be able to get from the 3 8 iron that's on there to the 3 quarter inch I need to connect the propane hose to or the green propane bottle to. So I think I got it though. So we're going to get home and we've got what looks like yet another thunderstorm building today. So hopefully we can get home and get this done before the next storm hits.
All right, hopefully this means Menards for the win. I've got three different parts here. We're gonna attempt to put these together. I dry fit everything in the store. So I think we're in good shape. Um, I just need to grab some propane line Teflon tape to make you put on these just to make sure the fittings are all good. And then we'll uh, hopefully get it all hooked up and try it out. This stuff does not tell me how many wraps. So I'm going with three full wraps. This is part of a kit I had that didn't work for my needs anyway, but uh, a lot of times when you're buying these, this tape, it'll actually tell you whether it needs two wraps or three wraps. And this one doesn't say, so we'll just go with three. I went with a street elbow to get a little angle on this because I think it'll just be convenient. Tighten that up a little more, I guess. Okay, that should hopefully be good. All right, now we need to get this one. This is cast iron coming out, so I just went ahead with a cast iron here. And then we need to get to brass because that's what's used these days, mostly. Uh, certainly on barbecue equipment and that sort of stuff. So this is going to go in here, like so. And then I got another one for here. And then it should go, this, this, uh, the propane should go right into it, like so. And it all dry fitted and the store looks good. So hopefully this is going to work. And like I said before, <clears throat> even though I'm not using the drilled out piece, we will test all this, pressure test everything, make sure it's, nothing's leaking before we try and use it for real because we don't want any of that excitement. Whoops, wrong end. I'll need that one end done in a minute anyway, so. And I'm kind of hurrying here because there is seriously a storm, a thunderstorm coming in and we're hoping to get this done before said thunderstorm arrives. So let me grab some pliers or just a wrench so I can tighten these down a little better. I got a nice adjustable wrench for plumbing somewhere. I cannot find it right now or else I could use that. But, you know, we'll just have to do it this way, the low tech way. Make sure everything's snug down good. And this should go on here, just like so. So it's a bit more of a process than I expected. I did not think I'd have to have so many different fittings to make this happen, but this is an old school vintage uh, stove and it's got iron coming out of it. So. Okay, this should go right in here. I'm not you worried about the tape on this one, the Teflon tape, because this does have a rubber gasket in it already. All right, there we go. So like I said, this was way more steps than I thought it would be, uh, but I think we got it done. I guess I should have just gone to Menards in the first place, and then we can get our 11% rebate too. So bonus there, right? Okay, let me grab my sniffer and we'll Check this thing, make sure we don't have any gas leaks, and then we'll grab a lighter and try and get it lit. I'll turn the gas on here. Let it flow. This is a combustible gas detector that we use when we're doing home inspections. I'll get this powered up. Goes through its thing here. There we go. Okay, now we'll sniff around to see if we've got any leaks around here. I'm checking around the gas valve too to make sure, because this is a new to us stove. Don't want a surprise of something burning we didn't expect it to. And now just to show you how this does work, we'll turn the gas on. Looks all good here. We'll turn the gas on and this should go off for us tell us it's got propane. Well, I don't know, we'll try lighting it, I guess. We got a couple lighters here, the boring, you know, but they're okay. But Melanie's got his little torch one that frankly is just a lot more fun to light burners with. So we'll see if this thing actually works. I did notice this is actually so old fashioned. It doesn't even have the lockout, the safety lockout. So you can bump it and turn it on with you, you know, if you don't even mean to. I think we're getting gas up through there. I think it's not getting through because the safety thing on it. 
All right, so unfortunately, this was a bit of a fail, at least for this time. <laughs> Everything connected, unfortunately, uh, there was no gas flowing. I failed to account for the fact that that adapter that I had did not have, uh, it wasn't actually for propane, so it didn't hit the safety release in the end of the hose here. Um, there is a, they need that tube that goes down and hits the release on these things. So I have not been able to find anything that's gonna work for that. So we may or may not come back to this another day. I've probably already got too much time and money into trying to make this thing work. Um, but it looks like it'd be a cool stove uh, if the gas valve works and if underneath where this is all soldered together, if that actually is not leaking propane or something, which I don't know because I haven't been able to get propane to flow through the stove yet. So we'll, uh, maybe we'll come back to this later, maybe not. Meanwhile, here's some footage from another project earlier this morning that actually did work. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> pretty simple uh, little another little chore from the chore day here and I was just cleaning out the ho uh, water trough for my uh, daughter-in-law's horse and donkey uh, the horse is a bit of a nut he likes to play in the water on hot days so he actually gets standing in the trough and and uh, you know splashing up water on his belly and everything and his chest to cool himself down but he makes a heck of a mess out of the trough so we took a few minutes to clean that out get a nice and uh, fresh clean water for him without any of the mud and sand at the bottom that he keeps putting in there. So that's kind of a regular project. So anyways, on to the horse trough. <laughs> 